for me, it was really cultivating the faith within me, cultivating the voice of faith within me. I look at it like this, right? When you plant an apple tree, the tree is in the seed. You don't give it the apples. You don't, it's already in the seed. You just have to put the seed in the right soil, seed, soil, and harvest, right? So trust what's in your seed. Get to know that. And a lot of times it's already in you. So cultivate that. Welcome to Audio Life, where we record your story in your voice. I'm your host today, Carrie Purcell. And today, on March 20th, 2024, it is my pleasure to be speaking with my friend, a brilliant businesswoman, a superstar mother of four beautiful girls, a wife, a daughter, and so much more, Deanna Hearn. Deanna, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited and I have no idea what we're going to talk about, but I'm, I'm all for it because it's you, Carrie. <laughs> well, I'm excited too. And I'm glad, I'm glad you stated it that way because really what we're going to talk about today is you. At Audio Life, we are going to talk about the brilliant work that you do in brain-based learning. And I know it's heart-led work and yeah. some of your professional accolades, but we're also really just going to talk about you. We want to look at the factors in your life, your upbringing, your lessons, your surroundings, your teachers that help to form and inform the amazing woman that you've become. Mm. So that's what we're doing today. Let's do it. Let's do All it. right. All right. And we're going to start right at the very beginning. Um, again, these are all questions about you. You know, you know the answers and you're going to share your story, but we want to start right where it where it all started. Um, tell us where you were born and is there a story behind your name? Wow. Okay. This is great. I'm, I'm really excited. You know what? I, I want to say this really quick before I kind of go dive in. I'm really in a, a place of reflection and gratitude right now. And you know, just even when you invited me in, I trust you. I love the conversations that we have even offline, but it's, I think it's such a beautiful alignment. Um, to have this conversation because it, it's a reflection of the space that I'm in just to look over my life and look at where I'm at now and what's ahead of me and just sit in gratitude. So I was born in Texarkana, Arkansas. Yeah. So um, my mom is actually, my family um, is from a little town called Ashdown <laughs> where it was so small that like I was, we always make this joke. We, it's so small that when you, you know, you're walking up the street, you see someone that you might think is attractive. You have to be mindful because that might be your cousin. <laughs> <laughs> you're so, but um, I am from Texarkana, Love Arkansas it. and definitely a story. You know, I think, um, you know, I really give so much honor to my mom. You know, she was born and raised in Arkansas and, um, I had the privilege of going back south with my mom some years ago, about, I'm going to say four years ago, when my grandmother passed, who I'm named after. Her name is Deanna. Uh-huh. She named me Deanna. Yeah. And um, she passed and uh, I went back home with my mom. And my mom was the very first one out of all of her brothers and sisters, and it was eight of them, that mm-hmm. moved from Arkansas to come to California. My mom was the one that left everything to start a new life, you know, in California. And she left when I was about two. Um, and she was married to my father. They were together through high school and things just, just didn't quite work out. And she wanted a better path for us, a healthier space for us to be grow, you know, to grow up mm-hmm. in. And she moved out to California where she met my stepfather who raised me, mm-hmm. um, who was also a pastor and loved me as if I were his own. I mean, they had to tell me that wasn't my biological (laughs) father. That's just how they raised us. They raised us like Uh we were like the Brady Bunch. She had her kids, he had his, and uh, no one said stepdad or stepmom. It was mom, dad, and they did everything in sync together. But I got a chance to get to know my mom's story a little bit more, you know, when we went back and this is four years ago because there were just things that she just didn't talk about all the time. Yes. So I just, you know, I give so much honor to my mom for the 
courage, you know, that she had to like leave everything that she knew to come into the unknown for the sake of her children and for the sake of her future, but still, you know, has so much history and family and all my aunts and aunties and uncles are there. And it was so nice to be able to spend that time with them as well. So that's a little, little bit about wow. my story. This is so uh, cool to be able to talk about this. My it's gosh. so <laughs> incredible. No, I can't believe how much, you know, I've just learned about you from, we've, we've known each other for a while. I feel like I, I, yeah. I feel like I know your family. I feel like I know your business yeah. life, but I had no idea. Um, any of that background. And it's, yeah, it's really incredible to hear and get to know you. I, my, I, my follow-up question is, is uh, just expanding a little bit more on what it was like growing up. So tell us about your childhood and, and what growing up was like. Oh my gosh. I feel like my parents, oh my gosh, I felt like they gave us such a beautiful childhood. Yeah. And then when I started to experience life, it was like, the world. <laughs> 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 like, you know, I mean, they, there was so much love mm-hmm. that, you know, we were, um, you know, saturated in, in our community, in our surroundings. My parents really, some people would call it sheltered, but they really just were very intentional to make sure that, you know, we cultivated our faith. My dad, um, at the time my parents got married, Uh, My dad was like a young um, elder, you know, he was a young preacher guy. And um, later he became a pastor. Um, You know, years later, he became an assistant pastor at another church. And then he opened up his own church later on. But, and so we grew up in a faith community, faith community that was very intimate, very small. um, And just really within our culture too, you know, a lot Mm -hmm. of like small African-American faith-based community. And um, we learned to love we learned, you know, the, the the love that Jesus walked in and all these things. And um, education was really big. My dad always mm-hmm. pushed his family. My dad catered and he cooked and he barbecued Ooh. for the whole community. We fed the homeless. We fed the community. Mm. I mean, my it's so funny because my sister just had this event where she honored my dad and as well as every other world changer is a world changer. Mm. event that she had and she gave honor to my we were able to give my dad um, a service award and my sister was just talking about the things that were most important in our home which was you know education which was family and faith those are the Mm -hmm. most important things and I just remember uh, she was recounting the time like we would have to get up at like five in the morning to fix food to finish off the preparation when we were going out to feed the homeless. And honestly, you have to think it's, it was seven of us. Right. Mm. And so oftentimes it was a lot of the girls because my brothers were older and sometimes they were off doing their thing, but um, we would have to fix sandwiches and different food and, and, and different things. And we would be tired. I just be honest, we were kids <laughs> and we were exhausted and we just wanted to like, honestly be in the bed and just yes, you know what I mean we wanted to help but we were also sleepy and like you know and mm-hmm. um, these were over the weekends after being in school all week right and so my dad though he took such pride in serving um you know the unsheltered and the the ones that did not have um, with mm-hmm. so much pride he taught us to do the same he said fix that sandwich like it's your own and he would even look at and go through and do a quality control check. <laughs> to make, I'm so serious, Kay. I, I, I didn't know what it was then. I thought he was just trying to ruin my life, you know. <laughs> but he, he wanted to make yeah. sure yeah. that, you know, the cheese was put it on correctly. The mayonnaise, the mayo looked presentable, that it wasn't hanging off and looking like you didn't care about it. You, yeah. you, everything you do, you do it with love. You do it with honor. You do it with grace. You do it with attention to detail. And then, um, so that was one aspect. And then another was, you know, I was the child that um, I wanted to explore things that my other sisters and brothers <laughs> were, were, you know, wasn't sure they wanted to explore. So, you know, I was really, I wanted to break out of, you know, our norms yes. <laughs> all the time, you know? <laughs> and so my parents, they were for it, but they were cautious. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And but they but they saw something in me. And what I love about them is that they trusted that gift and that desire that they saw in me very early. And they let me take them on adventures into places they've never been mm-hmm. and um, with people that they'd never been around. And they supported me. I wanted to be an actress. At one point, I wanted to be oh, an actress. Yes. You know, I wanted to major in fine arts and minor in uh, mathematics. And then it switched mm-hmm. somewhere after I went to classes and I was supposed to get these headshots and go to San Francisco and do all these auditions. And I was in this class and I was preparing and it just dawned on me. I could see the road ahead and acting would, would require a lot of passion, a lot of dedication. And even at 12, I don't know where that came from. There was an understanding of the weight of that desire. Mm-hmm. And if it was really what I wanted to do. And I think that's why I said, you know, I don't think this is going to be for me. I think I want to mm-hmm. pursue mathematics. I want to pursue the more academic side yeah. and minor in fine arts. And I made the switch and I never went back to that studio, <laughs> that acting yeah. class again. Yeah. And here we are. And I'm so grateful that I, I feel like I made the right choice for me. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And even making that switch, right? That is that bravery and that adventure spirit that you just told us about to have the courage to do that, right? To completely mm-hmm. do a, a 180 um, and take yeah. a different path than you had thought. I think that adventurous spirit is probably what brings the two of us together, at least in part. <laughs> we, yes. we get it we get it and we support each other on that on that journey um sure. but you did bring up you know you brought up these very distinct values that you that you uh, were raised with education mm-hmm. family faith and interestingly while I haven't heard about your upbringing I would have I would have known and guessed all of those I see them mm-hmm. in your life today right your mm-hmm. your business is focused around education and supporting education for learners for kids for families uh, family mm-hmm. is such a big huge part of your life and the first time I met you yeah. it was in very short order that I met your youngest daughter and then I think your husband <laughs> and then saw pictures of the other girls um, and faith That's just right. comes through in 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 every day right in everyday conversations yeah. and um, and so I mean it's uh, it's beautiful that you articulated that and it and 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 those were, were strong values that you recognize being raised with and that you very much take forward today. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm grateful to my parents. Everything that they poured in um, really was the catalyst for me to yeah. you know leave the nest and become, you know, all that I believe, you know, I was created to become. And I'm I'm really, really grateful they created a safe space for us to grow and to learn. And there were even times in my adulthood where they would have to, even after my husband and I got married, we were 21 when we got married, my parents would have to come over to the apartment. I would have them pray with me because I'd be crying because, you know, now it's the realities of life. And even though they, Mm -hmm. they raise us in such an intentional space, those stressors didn't take me out, but I was strengthened from what was placed inside of me. Yeah. And but I needed to learn that about myself. And so I'm really grateful for what they deposited. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Sure. I know, yeah. I know this is a theme that will come back up. Um, we will time when I jump in and hear about uh your more about your husband and your marriage. But but while we're on childhood, uh switching the yeah. tone slightly, what are some of the funniest moments that you remember? Okay. So I <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, this is such a fun conversation. Oh my God, I feel so, wow. I never take time to to like just totally look at the whole picture. This is so cool. Oh my gosh, heart pounding for you. Okay, so I have to, so me and my sister, Naisha, okay? Mm -hmm. She is, so there's, I have three older brothers and then there's four four sisters that I grew up with. Now, later on, I'm gonna tell you, my parents, added to our family and extended and adopted more kids. So, okay. So it's 13 of us total, okay. um, which I think is an absolute blessing. I just think that their calling is raising children, but let me tell you this funny story. Let me go back to it. <laughs> so my, um, my sister, Naisha and I, she's, she's my father's that raised me, his mm-hmm. daughter, his oldest daughter. So we're, we're born in the same year. So I just want to kind of mm-hmm. paint the picture 
that we are close in age, okay? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So she's a January baby, I'm an October baby, okay? So we're pretty close in age. And oftentimes we were in the same grade at the same time. So, you know, later on we dated friends too. So anyways, so we share rooms. So we're young at this time, right? So my parents, spare the rod, you spoil a child, okay? So let's just... Again, I'm raised in a faith-driven home, and this is like back in the day where Mm -hmm. kids got spankings, okay? Oh, yeah. (laughs) So so, so we're in the room, and my sister, Naisha, is talking to me about, um, she's telling me a story of, she went to the fair. She was telling me uh, something funny that happened to her when she went to the fair. So we're laughing. I'm, I'm laughing. It is like, really late at night, everybody is supposed to be asleep. Me and Aisha would always have, like, she knew how to make me laugh. Like I would laugh out loud and she knew how to contain herself. I I was the one that was all controlled and she was the one that controlled. (laughs) So she's telling me a story and I'm laughing and I have an outburst. My dad goes, Hey, you guys cut that noise out there. You guys be quiet, go to sleep. No, no, no. So I think the first time what happened, they heard us laughing. And then we both got in trouble. So we both got in trouble and we both got a whooping and sent back to our rooms. <laughs> so then she says something. So we got quiet for a minute. Then she says something else. And she kept saying the words that were making me laugh. And I mean, I'm like rolling. I'm like laughing so hard that I'm crying. So then by the <laughs> next time I laugh out, I, I, I outburst again. And my dad goes, who is that in there laughing? And I said, Naisha, like I yelled out her name. And so it was my Uh-oh. mom that whooped us the first time. The second time it woke my dad up. And when I said Naisha, she got another whooping. Oh, <laughs> she, got, oh. she got another whooping. She had two whoopings that night. She got her butt. You didn't thing. come clean and before? I did not come clean. <laughs> I couldn't she was mad at me for so long. Why well, do I say it didn't last too long? Because I, I was always getting her in trouble. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love it. But we, we laugh about it now. We, oh. I mean, like that is the story in the family. Like, um, I feel like she should be here telling the story because she tells it so much better than I do. But she was like, boy, that Deanna put me through so much, but I just, I just love her. She just, <laughs> she always put me through so much, and then she knew how to make me laugh. And you just couldn't help, you know. So, anyway, oh. that's one of the many funny stories that we have, kind of growing up. Yeah. Wow, oh, I love yeah. that, and I, I can, yeah. I, I get the sense that you were a great actress even at that time. <laughs> even if you didn't pursue it, you had it in you. <laughs> yeah. You had them all fooled. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I am. <laughs> so grateful oh for grace and growing up and uh I was a little I was a little you know I was a little (laughs) complicated (laughs) for my brothers and sisters like I kept them I was I was tattletailing I was keeping them you didn't follow the rules that was me too like they didn't want you know you're the tattleteller and like Deanna is the one that's you know oh she wants everybody to be on what they need you know so that was totally that was totally me, girl. I, I, I was like very, yeah, it was a very smart alecky. I was, you know, I didn't do a lot of like, you know, sneaking off and, you know, doing those sort of things, but I was a very mouthy kid. I was very smart alecky. Yeah. So why this? Well, what about this? <laughs> you know what I mean? I was totally... Yeah, that was that, that was my thing. <laughs> oh, maybe you were inquisitive and looking for purpose. Yeah. Thank you, Carrie. You're Thank welcome. You. That, that's my story, and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> oh, that line makes me think of my grandmother, who was a uh, an amazing, strong, wonderful woman, and 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 she said that a lot. That's my story, yeah. and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, I'm sticking to it. There we go, Grandma. And she did. There we go. All yeah. right. So a little, we, we learned a little bit about your childhood. I mean, if we had hours, I would ask you everything, but let's shift <laughs> over into going to school. And, you know, I have a, I have a feeling yeah. that this was really integral in carving out your, your path for your career. Um, obviously the direction mm-hmm. you chose to go in and maybe some of your personal life as well. So tell us about that. Yeah. Let me just first say my mother was a very critical, vital part of my success growing up in helping me 
for us to do boundaries. Okay. So in, in middle school, we lived in a kind of, you know, rough area, you know, <laughs> we grew up like, as I would say, in the hood, you know, and the middle school I was at, um, not a lot of kids, like some kids were advancing, but not a lot of kids um, that looked like me and that were female were mm-hmm. in advanced courses. And so I was, it was sixth grade when my math abilities mm-hmm. were being noticed and particularly noticed by my parents too. And my mom saw um, that the math that I was doing and the work that I was doing was very, it was too easy for me. And mm-hmm. and so my brother, uh, who also has like really, he is very, very intelligent in math and he's very advanced in math. He was older than me and he was in higher level math and I was able to do his math and I wanted to be doing his <laughs> level of math. And so my mom, um, I asked my teacher about getting, you know, being able to get into a higher class and he seemed to like not even entertain it. And so my mom <laughs> came up to the school and I just want you to imagine a Southern black woman, <laughs> like, you know, advocating for her child. Um, at that time, just what yes. she comes from, she's advocating, she's passionate. And for me, I didn't, you know, I wasn't raised in the South, even though my mm-hmm. mom's from the South. I'm raised in California and I have this heart for everybody. Um, and my mom does too, but she has stories that I don't have. She has lived experiences that I don't have. And so it was a bit like, calm down, mom. We're <laughs> just wanting to get a test here, you know? <laughs> You know, and I, now I can look back and understand that, you know, she has lived experiences. She has perspective. She has that, that are catered to where she's come from that she's bringing into today to progress, make sure her daughter, you know, get these opportunities. And so, um, while I didn't understand it, it worked. (laughs) So this teacher just took an ear and they gave me an opportunity to take this exam But it was done in such a way that um, it did not feel. And as it now, mind you, I want to paint the picture of these pieces because this matters for later. But that I'm a young kid and I'm like super positive. I want everybody to, you know, I believe the best of everyone. And I'm going through this experience where now I'm like, I've always liked to explore and push the boundaries. And now I'm seeing adults and how adults are navigating a kid Mm -hmm. and how adults are doing this. And it it was, it felt like um, I took the test and the individual, the teacher that gave me the test, it felt as if she wasn't rooting for me to succeed. She Mm -hmm. just wasn't looking at the rules of like, does she know it or does she not know it? It was more of like, you don't belong here. Like you don't, you know, and that was my Mm -hmm. first experience like that. Um, and so what my mom did is she saw uh, the skills, but she also saw the uh, tension that was there. She wanted me to be able to have an environment to thrive. Yeah. And she moved me into a school in my aunt's school district because our school district was, you know, obviously I, it just wasn't set up to receive the type of student that I was and, and where I wanted to go. And so my mom moved me. And from there, I remained in that school district all the way through until I graduated high school with the college. But what happened is, is that I got into the advanced math courses and that began to open up my mind about about my brain and what I can do. And the the teachers, the amazing teachers that I had that Mm -hmm. um, just wanted to teach great minds, regardless of, you know, where they're coming from. They just wanted Mm -hmm. to teach great minds. And so I just had such an appreciation for the advocacy that my mom gave, but also for these amazing teachers and human beings that just taught the class, you know what I mean? And and, and, um, and really navigated their own biases so that it wouldn't get into the way, get in the way. And so um, anyways, um, so high school, I, I, I went on and when I got into geometry, Carrie, Algebra thrived, did my thing. Geometry was the first math course that stomped me because, you know, usual spatial mm-hmm. skills was just very different. 
And I got my first F in math and it perplexed me. Yes. And I never questioned. Now, because we were like considered, you know, church girls and we looked like we dressed like little house on the prairie kids. <laughs> So I was used, I was used to looking different. I was used to dressing different. So being different wasn't a bad thing to me. It was just what I was. I did not question if I could learn the math. My curiosity became, how do I learn? Maybe my brain is different because when I'm engaging with my friends that have A's and B's in this course, Mm -hmm. we're having great thoughtful conversations and I'm able to have those conversations. So it's not my brain. You know what I mean? I'm fully capable. I thought that everyone thought that way. You know what I mean? And so it was never a question of if. And so when I went back into the course, I did do some things differently. So I identified uh, a young woman at my church that was taking calculus. And so I did get some support. So my parents had seven kids. So tutoring, private tutoring was very, uh, you know, they couldn't afford that. So we yeah. had to find ways. I also yeah. um, sat closer. I did things different. Mm-hmm. I was very curious about how this worked. Like mm-hmm. I was very, very curious. And then when I went back into the course and I got an A in the class, Carrie, oh my God, worked. it was like the boundaries. Like it was like I was always seeking to have wings and not shackles and whatever I was doing. And I also, Mm -hmm. I find myself even in my culture of my team doing Mm -hmm. that for other people here. Right. And so um, when I found those wings by identifying how my unique brain learned, I was like, I majored in math. I wanted to be a CPA. And then I had a teacher, an amazing, amazing teacher tell me about the career of an actuary. Mm -hmm. So then I pursued, I searched it and I was like CPA because I was on the CPA thing for a long time Mm -hmm. because it integrated with business too. And, um, and so then I just, you know, I I said, okay, actuarial work looks like it gives you much more diversity, much more depth and respect. And the pay was pretty good. So, (laughs) So I, I then after about 11th grade, I was really focused on becoming an actuary. So yeah, so then I the rest is history. So I went, I graduated, um, I went to UC Santa Barbara. So I went to a JC first. I got my math degree there because I did not want to leave home and go to a four year right away. Yeah. Um, also, it was very expensive. Yeah, and you know I had it good at home. I had my little pink canopy bed and. You know, my little, I, I got me a little cute little eclipse with a sunroof and my little pink. If you could just imagine, like my parents took care of me. Why would I want to leave all of that, you know? <laughs> and now for a word from our sponsors. Ready to share your stories and life philosophy? Or capture those of a parent or grandparent? Or maybe a corporate package is right for you to build connection across your workforce and add value to your clients. Visit audiolife.io today to learn more. Our listeners will get 10% off using discount code GIFT10 and order number Audio Life Podcast. Audio Life, where memories find their voice. You know, and then I had all my friends, and I've always had a very international, like, surrounding of friends. Like I mm-hmm. love learning. I do not want to be limited to anything. I want to learn about others. I want others to learn about me. Like I love being super connected to the world around me, you know, yes. and I love learning and not being restricted or in fear of, mm-hmm. you know, of things informed, but not in fear. Anyway, so I, you know, went to the JC, got my math degree. And during that time, DeAndre and I, we were dating all through high school. So I'm going to give you background a little bit. So in high school, while I was pursuing, you know, making sure that I graduate high school with calculus underneath my belt, Mm -hmm. I had to go to summer school. And when I went to summer school, guess who I met? (laughs) (laughs) You know, I met Mr. Hearn. I met DeAndre. His first name is Marvin, but I, we call him DeAndre is his middle name. And so um, we met in, in high school and I, I I made him wait, you know, until because I knew he wanted me to be his girlfriend. And so I was like, no, he's going to have to wait a little bit. I have to make sure this is a really good decision. I don't have time to get my heart broken. I don't have time for all this other stuff because I have goals in life and I don't want to be 
I watched so many other people do things. I just didn't want to jump into it. And so it was almost like hypothesis testing without real life. You kind of do it with other people. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. So um, I was a TA. I was this math TA. And so Mr. Newton, let's say his name because he came to our wedding. Mr. In Mr. Newton's class, about four months after we had met and started talking to each other, and my dad really liked him too, on my sister's birthday, November 19th, 99, in the classroom, I officially told him that I would be his girlfriend. <laughs> and um, and so that's when our relationship started in almost 25 years ago <laughs> in, uh, yeah. in that class. And we just began dating. And so uh, he... For a se- second, he went away to, to college after high school, and I stayed at the JC. And then he ended up coming back. It was really expensive. He got accepted to this really prestigious HBCU historical black college. Hmm. And then he came back up back to finish. And when he came back to finish, we met back up, and we were just inseparable from that point because we did kind of break up after that. It was like I don't know, you might be with other girls while you're, you know, <laughs> at, yeah. at college. So. So anyways, uh, we met back up and we've been married and together, you know, ever since, uh, you know, he came back uh, into California and we did, uh, we got married when we were 21. Mm -hmm. So we got married and um, we had our first child kind of all wrapped up in one in that same kind of year we got married. And so I had to, I had to plan, I had to plan I wanted to make sure I graduated on time despite getting married and having a baby. Yeah. And that's when my program GPA makeover was born. So what I did is I created down to a science. Okay. I'm telling mm-hmm. you, like, I'm like, Oh my God, my, you know, right. So I created this strategy called syllabus planning where I would take my syllabuses and I would literally prepare ahead of time for every single class to make sure that I was already ahead of the entire class before it started. And that's what allowed me to graduate on time. Also, I was able to skip math courses. So differential equations, linear algebra to get into more advanced courses. I'm not going to get too geeky, but anyways, long story short, I started creating academic systems in college to accelerate mm-hmm. my college experience in lieu of life happening for me as a young adult. Yeah. And um, and so I was already intrigued and immersed and curious about the possibilities of how we can bring science into academia in a more mm-hmm. practical way to advance ourselves in spite of you know things happening. And so, yeah, so graduated from UC Santa Barbara uh, with a statistical sciences degree um, with the focus on actuarial statistics. And because as I was the president of the actuarial club, I was able to obtain several job offers before I even graduated. So I already had a job lined mm-hmm. up before I graduated and went into that career. And uh, I'll stop there for now because I can go on. But um, <laughs> but that career really, honestly, even though I I anticipated to be there longer, I needed to stop there because a lot of the uh, data science and forecasting with data that I do in my in, in our in our brain based model came yeah. from my actuarial background, and yes. so I needed I needed those skills and I needed to um, engage that in in a real world sense to really understand how the theory of what I learned in statistical sciences, my major, played yeah. out in the world to be able to then integrate that into my educational uh, program. So <laughs> I don't know, I've never talked about this out loud, but this is cool. It, but it yeah. all, it's such a, it, it, it really has all just, um, it's a pathway, right? It's a, it's a journey that is all linked and it's all connected. And you've had these yeah. very, very distinct experiences um, in school, in younger school, when you're, you know, your mother advocated yeah. for you in high school yeah. and then throughout college and university and how that informed, right? What you bring is what you, right. what you experienced yourself, what you uncovered about your brain and your mm-hmm. learning, how you yeah. systematized it using your analytical Political mind, how you turned it into a system and strategies, yeah. and you bring the emotional side of it, right? You bring Ooh, the self awareness, sure. and you bring all of that together. Yes. Um, and I can yeah. see, and I, I'm sure as people are getting to know you, they will see 
how that actually <laughs> has come to life in the business that you created, how it all came together to be, mm-hmm. right? This, this whole experience that you've had and all of your skills have turned into this. And I will ask you more about your transition from your career as an actuary to what you do today, but I don't want to miss something important that you brought up that's happening along in the mm-hmm. background, which is raising yeah. children and being a mother. So tell yes. us, yeah, tell us a little bit about that experience. I would not have been able to do any of that without having an amazing partner. Um, Mm -hmm. DeAndre. Oh my gosh. I know that, you know, it was divine that our relationship comes together because we're first generation in a lot of things. He went into law enforcement. So, and even though, you know, you know, his dad was in the Navy and military, he was the first to become a police officer and his family's from Oakland, California. Mm-hmm. You know, in the Bay Area, where there's often a lot of challenging and hurtful and painful experiences with law enforcement, but he was able again. It's just like that that redemption of 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 these experiences that our families have had and and our you know uh, different ones have had to be able to come in like trailblaze and pioneer these pathways of like healing and wholeness into yeah. these spaces. And so, um, ah. It's, it's, it's something I wear with honor and gratitude. And sometimes you're saying things that people need to hear, to be honest, to understand what healing can look like, but also um, creating space to listen and to hold those spaces where people need to talk about things that are tough. But when it's, mm-hmm. you're endearing to them and you're in these spaces and you're the police officer and you're the, you know, in the spaces where there's not a lot of African-American women and you're speaking to the realities of these things, it settles in the realities that go beyond just what you look like. It's, this is kind of the reality of the, of this and, and that, and there's a lot of different perspectives to consider here, you know? So anyways, having a great partner and then having a wonderful village of support. Yeah. So this is, I think my mom, my sister's, Um, We also prayed everywhere we went and we moved because we literally moved like five or six times. And, you know, my oldest daughter, she's, uh, she'll be 21 this year. Um, She moved every last one of those times with us. Like, it was just like my sweet baby. Yeah. You know, whereas my, we have four daughters. And so Mm -hmm. my oldest moved the most with us. So, you know, she moved the most, but my other girls, they had more stability, if you will, they didn't move a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so her experience is just very, very different. We always were really blessed to have um, really good providers, uh, you know, a care team. So whether it was daycare, whether it was like Montessori school that we did or whatever it was, Mm -hmm. there was a caring adult outside of our home that we were able to bring into our village of support um, to make sure that they align with our values, they align with what's yeah. important that my our daughters were getting. And so, you know, that was really, really important for us and our faith community. So that yeah. also helped like having that as well. And um, yeah. And so uh, even our faith community kind of morphed into what representative of us. So our faith community, you know, became like super international looking and very diverse <laughs> and, you know, all these things, which is really amazing, but still holding those values of faith, which is, I think is the coolest thing. So I think with raising the girls, it was just having a wonderful village of support and making sure that those that are in your village reflect your values for your children. And yeah, and the thing that, you know, that's important for you to ensure that they have as they're growing up, you know, with you. And my girls oftentimes, Um, even especially Ramaya, she came with me to places too. So, you know, you had to, you see me, you see my kids, you know what I mean? So a lot of times I wanted them to see the journey and be a part of what I was doing. Um, Just like, you know, Carrie, like you and I, you, when you and I met too, we were speaking at a conference, I think in Vegas um, and you saw the whole family, like, <laughs> what do you mean? I did. They came to support and get the <laughs> award and like, you know, they're, they're off in the pool having a good time where we're like speaking and doing stuff, but checking in and coming in and like, I want them to see and be a part yeah. of it and have that exposure and meet different people, yes. you know? And so, um, yeah, so and yeah, does that kind of help a little bit? <laughs> meet, meet exotic Canadians, you mean like me? <laughs> <laughs> 
what they think. They're like, oh, I'm so cool. everybody. That's what they think. They feel like I know everybody. My girls, uh-huh. well, mommy knows everybody. I'm because like, no, you're, I don't know everybody. Because you're community focused <laughs> and people know and recognize you and hear you and, and see the vision you yeah. put forward. Yeah. And because yeah. you're their mom and you're the center, you know, the center of, of the yeah, world. Right. <laughs> absolutely 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 yeah, yeah for sure. well thank you for sharing that uh let's so let's talk about you know back to you talked about your your educational uh i'll call it a career your educational career and um yeah. and all of the uh all of the really important lessons that helped to you know help to shape the path that that took um mm-hmm. And then you, and then you, you got a career even before you had graduated, you were, you had job offers to entertain. Uh, it was a yeah. job that was, you were, you were well suited towards. It was interesting mm-hmm. to you. It brought a lot to your life. Um, yeah. but today it's not what you do today. Yeah. You are the founder and CEO at <laughs> MMC or Miracle Math Coaching. So how did that happen? I know I asked myself the same question. I'm like, what? Like, you know, and it happened sooner <laughs> than I anticipated. I think I always had it in my heart that one day I wanted to be a motivational speaker and I wanted to Mm -hmm. somehow do some things in education, but it was much more to be perfectly honest. I would just be thinking about getting started had I had it my way, right? I'm 41 years old today and um, I would have started maybe even later. Actually, I was thinking to start maybe in my 50s is what I was thinking because I wanted to this is my plan, okay? I wanted to build out my whole career as an actuary, go through all my actuarial exams, because it's a professional career with exams and things like that, um, and I uh, really establish myself corporately and then do all these other things, and that was a plan. But no, I, I, you know, I, I had about maybe two, three years in corporate, and I did not feel like my skills are being maximized in terms of impact. Mm -hmm. I felt like I made good money. I feel like you had power and respect because Mm -hmm. you walk into a room and literally not only are you the youngest person in the room, Mm -hmm. you are also (laughs) the only female. You are the only person in there that has the numbers and you get to actually say, if we are going to submit to the Department of Insurance, if the rates in your area are going to be raised or decreased in lots of yeah. agents, do you think brokers and all of that, they want you to lower the rates as much as possible. And if insurance or your actuarial findings does not dictate that, you get to say if that's going to happen or not, right? But that was not fulfilling for me. It wasn't about power. It wasn't about prestige. It wasn't about money. It was really about am I utilizing my skills, my background to make the difference that I, that I truly want to make in life? And Mm -hmm. so I did not know that I would ask myself this question at 25 and it perplexed me. And I remember saying to one of my supervisors, her name was Angel, go figure. Her name was Mm -hmm. Angel. (laughs) And I said, Angel, I have never not known what I wanted to do. And she said, it's not that you don't know what you want to do. You just may not have given yourself permission to do the thing that you truly want to do. And I think it was in that time that I honestly feel like it was divine. I felt like God put those words in her mouth, like literally put those words in her mouth. That is when I get literally in that moment when she said that. I literally gave myself permission to leave the actuarial um, career um, and leave wearing that hat, even though I'm still an actuary, but I'm an education or a former, you know, acting actuary, but I'm still using data science, still forecasting, still doing that. But I'm doing that with the amazing minds and brains and and data that we get from all of our students. And so that is when I I left the company that I was working for in Marin County at the time here in, um, in California. And I, you know, talked to my husband (laughs) who was, you know, full time, full duty at that time with the highway patrol. And he supported me. Yeah. He literally, there was no hesitation. He 100% percent supported me 
And so being a very methodical systems person, I went and started to search for a framework to help me get started to look at Mm -hmm. the business. And then I started to cast, understand uh, how to cast vision in it. Cause I didn't think I was a creative person at all. I mean, like now it creation is an innovation is so fun to me, but I didn't think I was a creative person at all at the time. It was just everything in the, is in the lines. It needs to go with the formula. It needs to be very methodical, you know, that sort of thing. But anyways, that is when I transitioned from that, you know, that kind of corporate to coming into entrepreneurship and starting my own business. But looking at my dad said this to me and I, I love my dad so much. And because he reads a lot of books and he does a lot of, he believes in coaching and mentorship. And he said, he said to me though, you know, the thing that God called you to do, he's also going to equip you to do. So he's like, hmm. if you're called to be a singer, <laughs> but you can't hold a note. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that yeah. doesn't flow. What yeah. God truly called you to do is going to be your passion. And you're also going to have the skills, hmm. you know what I mean? And the gifting mm-hmm. to match that. And so it was like, what am I passionate about? Like super, just love to do. I do it without even thinking, but I'm also truly good at, like, I don't even have to try, you know what I mean? Like I can go and sharpen it, but I'm already pretty good at it, you know? Yes. And that was motivating people. And that was thinking mathematically for me, because see, I actually tutored all through college. So it was another thing I tutored, taught, I did, I did all of that. I was always a TA all through high school and college. And so um, I, that's what I did is I, I went back to the things that I'm already doing. And I was already currently engaging in like summer camp. So GPA makeover boot camp. I, I engaged in that even before I left corporate, I, mm-hmm. I started the first camp that the mayor supported and we put out a little ad in the paper. I kid you not about that big. And we had um, nearly a hundred kids show up. Wow. And I literally, at that point, I, I mean, honestly, I just graduated from college not too long ago. I put on this camp, all these kids are showing up and I put together a team all through the church volunteers. Mm-hmm. And this pastor let me do this youth program. And I got already had partners that I've developed and built in other cities. Mm-hmm. And I engaged them to bring in practical, like finance and money and how we can make things fun and engaging for the kids. And I literally all, and I did not know about these skills within myself because other than that, I was in college. I was the class president, you know, for the actuary club. But other than that, I had never assembled anything like this before. And it was just extremely successful. And I think that's when I started to just learn more about, you know, sort of like a Marvel movie. You have these superpowers and you have to get to know them. You're like, what is that? What is that? If I do that again. Oh my God. And then when you learn what those superpowers are, then you could be intentional and also um, poised Mm -hmm. (laughs) and knowing how to be a good steward of those things. Yeah. Right. And so anyhow, but yeah. Oh, that's so, that's so incredible. Um, You know, it's uh, the real uh, influences and truth behind the origin story, the um, important people along the way. So you 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 had um, angel position to encourage you to give yourself permission to explore. Your father there to say, you know what, if it's your calling, you will you will know what it is and you will be equipped and you will have the skills to do it. Um, it's really it just it all just fits together so perfectly. You've had these important people giving you the right advice at the right time in your journey. What advice do you have for younger generations, whether it's learners that are coming to your center, whether it's um, the young Deanna that's on her path and isn't giving herself permission Mm. to think about something different, whether it's your own, your own daughters, your own children, what Mm. advice do you have? Yeah. You know what? I think of that and I, I believe it was Shakespeare that said this most above all to thine own self be true. Yes. Oh, I love it. You know what I mean? For me, it was really cultivating the faith within me, cultivating the voice of faith within me and um, trusting that peace and that voice and that intuition. Yeah. Some people might even say gut, yes. you know, inside of you. I think most of the great coaches and mentors that I have around me, they never tell me what to do. Yeah. They know great questions to ask me. So, you know, I look at it like this, right? 
when you plant an apple tree, right? The tree is in the seed. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. You don't give it the apples. You don't, it's already in the seed. Mm-hmm. You just have to put the seed in the right soil, right? And so I think everything that I'm doing right now, whether it's, you know, my husband and I, we do things with couples um, and then we have education, you know, and then we have our family stuff, you know, everything that we're involved in. I say it's seed, soil and harvest, right? So trust what's in your seed, get to know that. And a lot of times it's already in you. So cultivate that. And I, I think another piece is, you know, um, and I, I want to say this for me, guys, like this is my view of and what my experience has been in how I've become the person and I'm growing, the person I'm evolving into constantly mm-hmm. is we are three part being. We have a soul, we have a body, right? We have a spirit. And I have literally been around every, you know, different person that has different types of faith, whether they're agnostic, whether mm-hmm. they're atheist, whether they're Christian, every part, right? And um, I'm always who I am around them. And there's a piece that we have in being together, even though we may come from those different spaces, but they, they, I think we all get to see and acknowledge that you have to, it is very important for us to um, see and feed the different parts of our being. Yeah. That's wonderful. I, I, yeah. Yeah, there's there's so much truth there, and thank you for sharing that. And yeah, and, you know, I wish uh, we could talk all day, but as a wrap, <laughs> as <laughs> you know, that's true. <laughs> yes, I I would love to, and there's sure. so much more I that I want to hear. But as yes. we wrap up this session, is there anything yeah. else that you want to share that we haven't touched on? You know, I first want to just express extreme gratitude for creating this space to even reflect on me and my life and what my journey has been. I think oftentimes you're creating, creating, creating forward, 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 Mm -hmm. um, that there's also momentum building and equity in looking and reflecting back to understand how that was to propel you forward. And um, I'm really, really grateful for for you creating this space. Um, if there's anything that I want to share, I think it's important to um, heart and brain, the brain and the heart, they were created to do, they have very different functions. And oftentimes, um, I myself have found myself conflicted on, do I listen to my head or do I listen to my heart? Like, mm-hmm. what do I do? And oftentimes they're like, they're going like this because the heart mm-hmm. is giving you one perspective and the head is giving you a whole nother one. Yes. But I just want to encourage, you know, if you're out there and you're listening to this and you have your next step or you're, you're constantly leveling up, I just want to say that it is very important that we both think with our brains Yes. but we lead with our hearts. Yes. Uh, what a wonderful note to end on. Yes. And uh, I, honestly, today you could be just, you could be speaking directly to me. So I know that that's going to reach the people that it needs to. Deanna, yeah. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to share your story with me and with us today. Um, I will say I've always found you inspirational, whether you're presenting a keynote on a huge stage or whether we're just having a casual chat on Zoom or text. Um, I always hear the passion in your voice. I see the vision um, that you carry and that you carry for your company and for learners and for their parents. And I've always heard the love that you carry for your family and for, for your faith. And, um, and that came out both explicitly and implicitly today. So being able to capture all of this in an audio life uh, conversation was very special for me. And I just want to thank you for taking the time to join us. Well, thank you for having me. And I appreciate what you're doing through audio life. Uh, I think this is amazing. And um, I look forward to having Uh, my mom and different members of my family to really take advantage of what you're providing in the world today. So thank you so much, Carrie. Oh, that's wonderful, Deanna. Thank you. (laughs) 
Thanks for listening to Audio Life today. I've been your host today, Carrie Purcell. And if you like what we do, please don't forget to subscribe and follow our channel so you get all of our newest episodes. If you like what you heard today, consider recording your own Audio Life private podcast or giving one to a loved one for a unique and memorable gift. Today, Audio Life listeners will receive 10% off using discount code GIFT10 in order number Audio Life Podcast. Also, remember to rate our show and subscribe so you'll never miss an episode.